so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze and this is nezeville the corona's inquest to unravel the mystery surrounding mobat's deaths began about two weeks ago and on day one mobat's parents as well as his dj gave their respective accounts of all that they know recall that i had earlier enlightened us on what a coroner's inquest is. How I explained that it is not a court trial per se. No one will be sentenced at the end of this proceeding and no one is going to jail, at least not now. It is a judicial inquiry where a court's magistrate probes and inquires as to the cause of death, which is considered unnatural, unusual, or suspected. Of foul play and at the end of the day the magistrates will tender their reports if you want to get full details or understand what this proceeding is about you can make recourse to that video link will be in the description box well only a few hours ago the second sitting of this inquest took place and it featured one whom a majority of people have been dying to hear her account. It featured the account of none other but Mobat's widow herself, Wumi. And for the first time since the death of her husband, she has now spoken extensively. In her over three hours of testimony, Wumi, who disclosed that she met Mobad when she was in secondary school, high school for those not watching from Nigeria, disclosed a whole lot. She gave her account of the incident leading to her husband's death, the day he died and the way he died and what has now happened after his death. We will discuss and break this down subject matter by subject matter. Let us begin. On the issues between her and Mobat's father, Wumi said that the relationship between her and Mobat's father started on a very warm, pleasant and cordial note. They had a good father-daughter relationship at the onset. They ate from the same plates, confided in each other and they were like best of friends if I can put it that way. She said that her father-in-law would constantly bless her womb and pray for her to conceive and bear a child. She disclosed that they were so close that she and her husband's rented apartment at Lekki used to be the meeting point for Mobat's father and his concubine. No, I don't mean Mobat's stepmother. I mean his father's girlfriend. So he would constantly bring his lover over to their home to spend the night and she never raised an eyebrow or questioned him. Rather, she accorded him his respect as that was his son's house. She recalled that trouble in paradise started on the day that she had Moba's child, Liam, and that Moba's father had demanded for the placenta of the child. She said that it was Moba's decision not to hand over Liam's placenta to his father as he was not just comfortable about that demand and that that incident began to make their relationship sour as he was under the impression that it was Wumi who refused to hand over the placenta. She claimed that another major issue, in fact the last straw that broke the camel's back was on this fateful day when Mobat's father brought this same concubine to their house unannounced. He didn't tell them that he was coming with his lover. He just showed up and when he showed up, he met Mobat's mother who had come to visit. She said that Mobat's mother was very upset that she and Mobad will allow his father to bring his girlfriend over to their house to spend the night as that does not respect the sanctity of their union and that that caused a big issue and Mobad's father was under the impression that Wumi set him up and according to her that incident further solidified their enmity and the pastor turned her to his sworn enemy. She refuted the claims made by Mobad's dad 
that he had seen the buckets of blood lying by the corners of the room the day that Mobad died. She said that the contents of that bucket was water and that Mobad's younger brother who used to reside with them can attest to that and that there was no blood gushing from anywhere as the injury that Mobad had earlier sustained was a very small cut. Now that is that on the issues with her father-in-law. Let us now move to the next subject matter. What transpired on the night of the show and what led to that ill-fitted fight? Wumi further opened up on what transpired on that night. She said that Mobad had gotten invited for a show somewhere at Ikorodu and that he went with her, their child, his younger brother who lived with them and his friend, Prime Boy, amongst others. She said that they arrived the venue at 7 p.m. but Mobad performed around 9 while she sat in the car with their child. After Mobad's performance, he had tried getting into the car but he was swarmed by a bee of fans who began beckoning on him to settle them, to show them love. In other words, to give them some money. She said that Mobad gave them a hundred thousand naira but the insatiable crowd was still testing for more. They kept on clamoring for more money and they wouldn't let him go. So he had to send somebody to go fetch a bouncer to disperse the crowd and then when the bouncer was taking forever to come back he had to give his younger brother some money to go make some smaller pieces out of it in nigeria we call it to make change so he could give the crowd and they would let him go and so the brother left and there they were seated in the car and according to her she was seated right in the middle moba to one side and prime boy to the other so she sat in between them she said that mobat's brother took a considerable amount of time before he returned and that angered prime boy who lashed out at him questioning him for keeping them waiting all this while and the mobat's brother lashed back at him and then they fell out according to her prime boy expected that mobat should have intervened and cautioned his brother to bridle his tongue, call his brother to order as Prime Boy said that he wouldn't have sat there if the tables were turned and watched his own younger brother insult Mobad. And before she knew it, Mobad and Prime Boy began having a disagreement. The argument quickly escalated and Prime Boy addressed Mobad as promise which she said Mobad didn't like to be called in public and then he went ahead to say Mobad shut up. She said that when Prime Boy told him to shut up Mobad got so infuriated and so he sprang out of the car furiously from his own side made a turn to where Prime Boy was seated and when she saw that the matter has gotten out of her control she dashed out to the other car the other Prado Jeep to call other guys to come and separate them and intervene and that when she came back a crowd had already gathered trying to intervene and separate the fight and in the course of that scuffle Mobad had already obtained an injury. So that is Wumi's testimony about the fight and the cause of the fight. The ill-fated argument that snowballed into all of this. So next let us discuss her own account of the aftermath of that event. So the next subject matter, injured and back home. Wumi testified that after that incident on Sunday night, by Monday, she was visibly upset with her husband for how he conducted himself in public. And that when Mobad noticed her anger and her silence, he approached her and apologized to her and then they made up and then he went ahead to show her the injury that was hurting him. Wumi said that she had beckoned on Mobad for them to visit the hospital immediately but Mobad had declined saying that it was only a minor injury and that he was gonna be fine and that a nurse was coming very soon 
to check it out. So no worries. She noted that Mobad had an intense phobia for hospitals and hospital environments after that NDLEA incident when he was allegedly giving something to drink when he was in detention of the NDLEA. And after drinking that substance, he landed in the hospital terribly ill. She said that after that incident, Mobad developed a big loath for hospitals so bad that he had begged her that she should try to deliver the child at home instead of going to the hospital. So according to her, when Mobad declined going to the hospital, she got a methylated balm, what we call rub in Nigeria, and applied it around the injury, hoping that it was one of those small cuts that will heal and disappear. She reiterated that the wound was neither deep nor severe. So that was Wumi's account of what happened shortly before Mobad passed on. So let us discuss her testimony on how Mobad died. Wumi explained that Mobad's personal nurse was not available and that his friend Spendin had invited another nurse to come check out the injury at home. And when this nurse arrived, she and his DJ informed her of Mobad's medical history that he had ulcer and then she proceeded to check the hand and went ahead to administer some injections. According to Wumi, she was cooking simultaneously as the nurse treated her husband. So she had stepped out briefly to check what she had cooking on the burner. And when she returned, she heard something in the likes of Mobad complaining to the nurse that she should stop, that the injection is making him feel funny. But in a twinkle of an eye, he fell down and began vomiting and convulsing. Wumi said she dashed out of the house to go seek for help. She noted that Mobad's vehicle was not present on ground as it was in the mechanic. So she dashed over to a neighbor's house to call for help, who in turn sprang into action and then they all moved to the hospital. On their way to the hospital, they encountered a traffic jam. She said they couldn't sit put in the car to wait for the traffic to subside. She sprang out of the car, they got a motorcycle, what we call Okada in Nigeria, a bike, a motorbike. So they all rushed to the hospital on motorcycles. She said that when they got to the hospital, she wasn't allowed to proceed beyond a certain point. They rolled Mobad into the ward, but only 15 minutes later, the doctor came out to pronounce that Mobad was dead and as a matter of fact, he was brought in dead. Breaking into uncontrollable tears, Wumi noted that she couldn't believe her ears or eyes. She called Mobad's mother, his cousin and some other close family relations to tell them what had happened. And that was Wumi's testimony at the coroner's inquest which held a few hours ago, detailing her account of how Mubad died. On why he was hurriedly buried and buried in that state in an undersized coffin. Wumi noted that after she informed Mubad's mother, his mother certainly called his father and his father came and took Mubad's body. She emphasized that Mubad's father completely left her in the dark in the arrangement of her husband's burial. According to her, she didn't even know that her husband was getting buried. Mobad's father completely sidelined her and buried Mobad without telling her, consulting with her or carrying her along. She got to hear of her husband's burial from third parties and that after her husband died, she has not even been able to stay in the house as she has been getting death threats from internet users and members of the public promising to kill her and accusing her of murdering her husband. We will stop here for now. So when it comes to social media judgments, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, like a perfect testimony. The whole truth may seem like a lie because life and its circumstances itself 
does not play out perfectly like the movies. And on the other hand, a well-crafted lie may also appear as the truth. It's about seeing what your eyes wants to see and hearing those parts that your ear wants to hear. It is about choosing to believe what you want to believe. So this is Wumi's account. We all have been dying to hear it. What do you think of it? Let us know your thoughts and feelings down in the comment section. Well, there are some consistencies in Wumi's testimony with the testimonies of other people that have given their own accounts, especially when it borders on the fight, the injury, the nurse, the injections administered and the reaction after the injection. There are some similarities. But one will also note the apparent inconsistencies when it comes to the area of the cause of the fight. Recall that Prime Boy had told us earlier that the reason why he fell out with Mobad was that Mobad was having an argument with his wife and he was trying to intervene to calm Mobad down. And Wumi, on the other hand, is testifying that the argument was with Prime Boy and Mobad and she was the intercessor. So the big question is, who is telling a lie and who is saying the truth? Well, I think one person can step in and resolve this discrepancy. And that one person is none other but Mobad's brother himself, who was said to be present in that vehicle and who is believed to have witnessed all of these. I am earnestly looking forward to his own testimony and I am optimistic that maybe on the next adjourned date, coming up a few days from now, the court will invite him to give accounts of what he knows. I'll be keeping my eyes on that. In our next video, we are going to be reviewing a lot, including all that Wumi has to say about Naira Mali and Sam Larry and what transpired. If she was truly a Malian, her relationship with Naira Mali, her involvement with Sam Larry, all that transpired between her husband and that record label. We're also going to discuss all that Mobad's best friend. <laughs> there are so many best friends springing up these days. We now see that there is another man who identifies himself as Mobad's best friend and he also has something to say about Wumi. In our next video, we will be addressing the other parts of these accounts as well as so many other things that have come to light. If you're not subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, share it if you want other people to hear it as well, and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way. It's me, your girl Barista Neze, and this is Nezeville.